given that this is a Terrapin conference and Terrapin is all about using your brain, I want to show you how much of your brain is in fact used when you tell the right kind of story. The first kind of story that we tend to tell is what I call a dead story. For example, medical aid. It's very important that even young people have a good medical aid. Disease may be unexpected and if one doesn't have a medical aid, one may be left with both medical and financial problems, and therefore everyone should have a good medical aid. Now, um, that's what's going on in your brain uh, right now <laughs> with the dead story. Uh, not a whole lot of activity, right? Uh, uh, so let me give you a living story. My friend Howard was just 24 years old when his doctor told him, you've got cancer. He shook his head in disbelief, not realizing that it was about to get a whole lot worse. We need to get you into a good private hospital now. How are you going to pay? That's when Howard put his head in his hands and started crying. As a young, healthy person, he had just never seen the importance of medical aid. Fortunately, after many months of treatment, he managed to get better, but to pay for his medical expenses, he had to sell his apartment. Four years later, he's still living with his parents. If you are young and without a medical aid, which of those two stories is more likely to persuade you to buy one? Just maybe. Let's see what happened in your brain. You would have had a visual image of that scenario, Howard and his doctor. You would have heard Howard's doctor say, cancer, and you would have felt, and this is very important because this is what stories do, is you would have felt it. This is the limbic system, the emotional part of the brain, some of the terror of discovering that you may have cancer. But of course it wasn't really Howard. By giving you a character and a story to identify with, your mirror neuron network was activated. You walked in his shoes and you felt the pain of being a young person without medical aid, which of course is nothing like that to motivate you to make sure that you do have one. And finally a memory was laid down in your brain. Dead story, living story. Living stories don't really tell us what to think or what to say or what to do. They take us on a journey in somebody else's shoes after which they allow us to draw our own conclusions. Have you noticed that lessons are much more powerful when we figure them out ourselves? Also, the more sensory and the more emotional, the more likely we are to remember and act. And so that's why if you hear 10 facts, you're lucky if you remember one. Whereas if you hear a story, you're actually likely to remember the whole thing.